meeting in order. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the roll call. Meyer. Here. Whaling. Here. Kaburos. Here. Kraus. Here. Possession? Here. And President Szymanski is absent. Okay, you have a few minutes from our previous meeting. Uh, we need to approve those. Are there, are there any changes or additions to that? If not, if you want to take the... Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Roll call. Meyer. <coughs> Whaling. Yes. Kaparos. Yes. Kraus. Yes. Possession. Yes. Okay, Village mm -hmm. Clerk report. Uh, the total tax income received uh, in the month of December 2020 was $168,550.89. <coughs> and I just want to make an, an announcement for um, the people at home being able to know that uh, we were advised last week that the new Mexican restaurant, Pachanga, plans to open for business sometime in February at the old Aurelio's building at 436 Dixie Highway. We'd also learned that the subway next to the Dunkin' Donuts will be reopening this week with a different franchise owner. So we're hoping to get those all going. That's it. Okay. Anybody in the audience uh, wish to be heard? Okay. Report from the village president. The village president is absent. Uh, let's get into the committees. Uh, Trustee Caporo. Uh, consider a motion approving the treasurer's report. Donna? Um, and the, the December month end total for the village accounts, $2,309,655.27. The month end total for the commission accounts, $149,488.81. The total of all combined, $2,459,144.08. The month end of general for December, $761,396.31. The commission non-AP payments for the month of December total, $244,185.89. Nothing out of the ordinary. And if there are no questions, that ends my report. Okay. Yeah, none. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Second. Okay, roll call vote is possession? Yes. Missouri? Kraus? Yes. Kapros? Yes. Wailing? Yes. Fire? Yep. Alright, variance reports are in close for your uh, review. Um, bills. Uh, see, there was a couple of late arrivals. Uh, Conserve FS, uh, Delta and Chloride College, 687.50. Mark, oh, uh, Julie Inc. annual locating fee seven seventy two fourteen. Uh, Martin Whalen, uh, copier seventy nine fifty eight. Uh, Pons Tire Service tire sur uh, tires for a public works vehicle uh, six fifty seven forty six. I believe that was it for a to uh, total of bills for $90,424.71. Uh, 
So I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the bills for the month of December in the amount of $90,424.71. Second.
see in, in municipal agreements the option for their, for both parties, if they're happy with the services, they're happy with the pricing, they're happy with uh, the programs that are in place, um, that uh, with 180 days notice, uh, both parties can meet to decide to just continue the ongoing program and have a renewing clause of five years. Um, it eliminates a lot of hurdles um, that forces towns to do things that maybe they don't want to do. Uh, it still allows the village, if they wish to seek um, uh, a proposal or a bid moving forward uh, at the end of this agreement, it allows enough time for the village to still do that. Uh, but we found that putting these renewal clauses in there, if both parties are happy with the services, it, it works you know, for home and disposal as well. If, if something happens with maybe the garbage on its own, well, we can go to the village and say, you know what, we need to renegotiate this. And it works the other way around, where the village should. Or if both parties come together and say, we're happy with everything the, the way it is, um, nothing has to be done. It, it would renew under like terms. So um, it's just something I added uh, in as we see it more and more prevalent in the, uh, in the municipal uh, contract world that, that we're in. So um, that answer your question, Bob? Um, I'm, I'll talk again. Um, does anybody have any questions about the program? Do you want me to clarify some of this? Do we have questions for Frank while he's here before we pop back to finance? Uh, Frank, on the e waste. Is this something we're looking at? On the e waste, what kind of other is today or is it discussion? Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious on the e-waste right. disposal. Is there, are there any restrictions there, or is it like big waste, little waste? The only restrictions we have on the electronic waste, and the biggest challenge we have with e-waste right now is the uh, proper recycling and processing of televisions. Um, from early on programs we've done in other communities, we, we learned that we need to restrict, be strict on the number of televisions that a resident can put out a year. Um, and we want residents throw away one TV or monitor a year with unlimited all electronic waste. As we know, electronic waste was banned from Illinois landfills in 2012. Um, that put a burden on the solid waste industry because we really don't have a lot of processors that can properly dispose of these TVs. Um, some TVs, rear projection TVs, can cost as much as 86 cents a pound. Um, you know, you're talking you know, thousands of dollars a ton to get rid of TVs now. Um, so we want to prevent uh, any TVs from being, coming from outside of Beecher, we want one TV per household per year, and then when they when we come by and pick up that TV, it'd be a separate truck. Uh, we would ask residents to call us. Uh, it would be on the same day on Monday, uh, weekly. We provide this collection. We would just ask the residents to call our um, our customer service department and schedule that. So I'll have a TV, a VCR, uh, a DVD player uh, out for collection, a computer, a laptop. Um, all those items, electronic waste, that we find the Illinois law would be allowed to be put at the curb, and we would pick it up with a separate uh, truck from the other trucks that are already in the community. We have to treat that as a special waste now. Um, and that's every every Monday. That'd be every Monday. But it, only it, one TV per year. One TV per year. Okay. Um, and uh, but any other waste, you know. So if you got alarm clocks, you know, the, the list is pretty extensive in Illinois uh, of electronic waste. We have alarm clocks, it could be keyboards, um, you know, uh, any iPhones, uh, app. And I think with a cord, they say, um, electronic, so computers are big. So, yeah, uh, but they would, we would ask them to call. You don't want my truck driving through your entire village looking for you. So we right. want to say, okay, we got 18 TVs this week, and here are the addresses. And then we would route him just to drive down those streets and pick those up. Okay, Todd. Uh, my question was answered. Thank you. Any other questions here? I don't believe there's any other questions here, Marcy. Would you like to table it and talk to it after, or talk about it after uh, John gets done with financing? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there's some. You know, just kind of clarify this, but we can go over it more later. Um, option one is pretty similar to what we have now. If we need to, if we wanted to add the electronic waste, it's an additional 35 cents per month. Whereas the uh, electronic waste is included in option two, and that's of course much more expensive. So, 
um, I'd like to table it for now, and then we can go back to it when we're done with finance. Okay. Sounds good. So I think we're done with Frank here? Yeah, unless you want me to stick around, I'm more than happy to stay okay. around. So. Do you want him to stick around, or is he free to go? Um, no, he's free to go. We don't have to, because it's a five-year plan. We're going to be going on with that for quite a while. <laughs> okay. Okay, then. All right, back to the five-year plan. Uh, every, everyone should have uh, two copies in front of them. Um, we'll start with the uh, first draft. Bob, you out there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. All right, you want to give a, a quick a little two-minute synopsis on this? Okay. Get the five sure, absolutely. We have two drafts of the plan in front of you. Draft number one is the plan without any revenue changes uh, other than what's in the current ordinance. So, in, in this first plan, the general fund doesn't change in either scenario. The general fund remains the same. There are no anticipated changes in any general fund revenue. The problem we had is in the water and sewer. So the first big package that you have is a five-year financial plan using the existing 10 cent rate increase on both the water and the sewer system, and also maintaining the current water main replacement charge. When we met with the finance committee, the finance committee determined that the 10 cents per year is not going to be sufficient to fund the water and sewer operation. Um, after uh, several committee meetings, it was decided to recommend to the board an alternate plan for your water and sewer system, which includes an annual 25 cent rate increase on both the water and sewer, which increases the water and sewer by about 15 cents a year as opposed to the current dime a year that we're currently getting. Uh, that generates sufficient revenue to take you at least three years um, in the black the water and sewer system. The committee also discussed a water main replacement charge increase of $1 because currently over half of our current revenues are pledged to debt on the water main replacement system. So the, the second report that you see in the ultimate plan is if we increase the water main replacement charge by a, by a dollar, you would have, instead of 200 and some thousand in your five replacement names, you would have a number, I'm trying to find it on my computer here, uh, close to 497, if I recall. Let me find that number. Uh, actually, 794,000. I can that. So, the, the, the committee was recommending that also a dollar increase on the water, water main replacement charge for at least consideration of it to generate more money to replace the main. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll, hand it, I'll hand it back over to you. Okay. Alright, so uh, just going through this. Uh, we have the uh, health insurance forecasted out, uh, and we'll kind of quick breeze through this. You have uh, page two is general fund uh, revenues forecasted out. There is an assumption of uh, hopefully new residents coming in for uh, some possible increases for state income tax and state use tax. Um, page three, fund one, village president, board of trustees, really no changes forecasted in the next five years. Advisory board and commission, same thing. Uh, Department of Administration, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, basic increases based on uh, salary tables. That's about it. Um, Department of Inspection Services, nothing there. Uh, emergency Services, EMA, no real changes there. Police Department, you'll see some, some changes there. Um, I believe we have. Um, New officer figured in for 21-22. Uh, 
Hopefully, uh, come budget time, we can make that work. But we did forecast that in for the five years. Then did the expenditure end for the general fund. Uh, environmental health and sanitation, no real changes there. Uh, Department of Streets and Alleys, same thing, no real changes there. Um, increases in salaries. This is uh, the fund that the two new hires will be placed in. Um, Department of Buildings and Public Properties, no real changes there. Capital improvements, comprehensive expenses. Uh, hopefully, we see some changes there uh, with the comprehensive insurance. Um, everyone should have received an email from Bob. Bob, you want to touch on that just to kind of bring everybody around, or is everybody understanding on uh, the increases and why? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. The liability coverage for the village substantially increased due to two factors, civil unrest and law enforcement liability. And those two conditions in the market that caused all municipal insurance rates that are not totally self-insured to completely go up. We are in an insurance pool, but we're not 100% self-insured. We're only self-insured up to a excess level. We're going to go out in the market and buy excess coverage. Uh -huh. So the excess coverage was significantly expensive this year. Seeing that it's not going to change for a couple of years, we had to amend the five-year financial plan to show the increased insurance costs we're going to be exposed to the next few years. All right. Uh, page 8, you'll see Parks and Rec Department, and that basically ends the general fund. Um, in there, you'll see the general fund um, expenditures by department. Um, and then, again, you'll see total expenditures towards the bottom of the page versus anticipated revenue. You will start to see that we are projecting out or a short, uh, short downfall um, come fiscal year 22-23 and trending on. Uh, at that point, I think we'll have to make some adjustments in that, but I think we're pretty comfortable with where those are at. Um, hopefully, we see some growth and um, there's some other changes that can, that can affect that. Um, <sighs> Next would be page nine, capital equipment sinking fund. Uh, no real changes there um, for the courtesy of our newest trustee, Mr. Usession. Did you have any questions? Do you understand the capital equipment sinking fund? This is my favorite fund. This is the favorite fund, huh? Yes. I mean, I, my assumption here is this was just replacement of general public works. Equipment. Yes. So what we did was the, the board many years ago before I was on staff and Scott was here and, and part of that, um, rather than going to loans for vehicles, they created a, a, a sinking fund. Mm -hmm. And what happened was they, they planted seed money to start that out. And then what happens is, is purchases come out of that. And then the actual departments that is responsible, whether it's um, you know public work streets or if it's charged through water or sewer, they then make um, the yearly payments back into that farm for rest out. Typically, most of them are at a 10, some are at a 15 year mm -hmm. scale. So we're basically just paying ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it generates a nice chunk of income to where we got a nice um, schedule for being able to buy equipment, which is on the very next page. Um, there's no real changes to that. Based on the five year, you'll see uh, Next year, um, we are, it's the, the big truck we'll be replacing. And we got 67,000 budgeted there to replace the, a large truck for Matt. Uh, refuse fund, you'll see that. Um, we did put some assumptions in there for the five years out uh, based on that. 75 cent increase that um, Homewood Disposal 
has put out as an offer. Uh, Parks and Rec, Capital Equipment Fund, nothing there. MFT, not much there. Fund fuel Fund, nothing. I think I to get to the Public Infrastructure Account. Not much changes here. Public Infrastructure Account Projects, the timeline. Um, we have that here, there you'll see the 22-23, the uh, Penfield Street project, hopefully getting completed there. And then there, there's funds figure for coming in for the loan for that and now. Beautification Commission. And finally, Fund 51 is our water fund. Um, you'll see revenues at the top. Which are pretty consistent. We do have some issues that I know we've been monitoring as of late over the last couple of years. And the fact is, it's just we don't bill at the rate that we used to. Um, whether that's appliances being more efficient, toilets, shower heads, wash machines, so forth, people being more conscious. Um, it's there. It's noticeable. Um, you go down to the expenditures. When you look at this fund as an individual fund, you see the total expenditures uh, versus revenue, and you see we're in the red. Um, this is something that I've been bringing up for the past couple years. Um, we got two trustees that can't see my face, but uh, we got two here that can, and. Uh, this is the day, guys. This is this is the day that I said was coming for the past two, three years. That two, three years from now, we're going to be looking at a five-year financial plan that's got our water and sewer department into the red. And today is that day. Um, years ago, which I, I can't remember when this ordinance was. Scott, I don't know if you remember off the top of your head. I bet uh, Bob does. But at some point, the, the village board... Um, put it in by, by ordinance that the water and sewer rates would increase by 10 cents per year um, per thousand gallons. And we're at that time with inflation and increases that that does not cover costs of increase in labor for our employees, increasing chemicals, increase of uh, equipment, and so forth. Um, these have been funds that the water and sewer fund for our village and, and this service that we provide our residents is important. Um, we've seen other towns uh, get into trouble with their funds. I shouldn't say trouble, but whatever, made decisions with their funds um, to sell their water system. Um, at which point you have no control over uh, rates or say into the sewer and water system within your own village. Um, I know that last time we discussed this, the makeup of the board uh, is pretty much identical now, except for um, one, and it was an overwhelming majority of this board that had made that decision that we would never contemplate selling our system, um, that it's ours. Uh, we made a substantial investment into it with the wastewater treatment plant to keep up with current regulations and changes that were coming. Um, and, and now it's time that we address more. Um, if you look at your alternative plan, which shows 25 cent increases per year rather than the 10 cent increases per year, um, you'll, see, uh, you'll see the changes. Not light shattering, but it, it's it's enough to keep us going in the black. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I I don't know what else to say that I haven't already said. I mean, does anybody else have any input on this or thoughts? So that 
at uh, 25 cents will bring up 16,487. Is that what it is? Yeah, right about there per year. That's the difference in it based on on volumes build of 10 cent increase versus 25. versus 25. The extra 15 cents. No, we. Mr. Chairman, can I just point out one thing? Yeah. Okay, if you, if you look at the alternate plan in the, in the beginning of the report, after my memo, you see a, a, a chart there. It goes back to 1982 on gallons built. And one of the problems we have in our system is we peaked on gallons built around 2012, 2013. We saw steady growth in gallons built. After the housing boom quit and more efficient fixtures came into play, we've seen a reduction in gallons built over time. So the rate increase of 10 cents has even kept up with the loss of built gallons that we've seen in the system. So just to generate the same amount of revenue that you have been in the past, we have to raise the rate. But it's just a function of how many gallons are built. I have a question. <laughs> Yeah. Sounded like Krauss. Uh, yes. Go ahead. What you got? Sorry, I'm, try, I'm trying to work with this delay. So yeah, no, I, I understand you. the gallons build has gone down, um, but I'm also looking at a pump to build ratio, uh, 51 percent. If we can get that under control, or is there a way to get that under control? I mean, because I see here it's got kind of historic. The historic data of 10 years is average of 6 percent What is that loss costing us? I mean, would that make up for that hand new 25 cent increase if we get that pump to build ratio up? Well, I'm going to let Matt comment on that. Well, hold on. I'm going to comment on that one, too. Uh, okay, go ahead. That, that would kind of come in with the second part of us needing to replace water mains, Trustee Krause. Um, the, the pump to build ratio is, is it's figured in there, Matt. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's uh, the average water system figures a 20, 25% loss. Yes. Yeah. 25% loss um, on average, right? So the problem is is that our, our aged system, that we're, we're having more than that. Um, there, there is some things that I, I have talked about with Matt, and um, these are things that can come up at budget time. Do we look into... Um, which is, I think, right before you came on top, you may have been involved, I think, in a few of them, where we had leak detection done throughout the town through a company called Simpson. Uh, we even had another company come out, and to no avail, you find a couple of pin leaks, and, and they are able to identify a few, and then it's still, there's still no changes. Um, I think the only way to change the pump-to-build ratio is to replace the mains. You got hundred-year-old ductile mains out there that, that still need to be replaced, which is, you know, the question for part two for all this. But um, I, I think in answer to your question in a short time is uh, I think it could help it the situation, but uh, you're looking at a large investment to to make sort of that to be able to make that sort of difference. Yeah, I mean, and I know none of us, you know, want to increase all this, but we also need to be fiscally responsible. I think it'd be easier uh, to swallow this if we knew the investment in this would help that, and then therefore pay for itself, maybe further down the road. Well, that's that's part of the is that even that's part of the second part, which is goes into the you know if the board wants to entertain adding an additional dollar to the water main replacement fund. You know, here's, here's the thing. This, this board, I think, has always been extremely fiscally responsible. Um, you know, we, we went, I think it was 10 years without uh, increasing our levy dollars by a single penny. Um, and at the same time, I, I, I still agree with that. Uh, the past two years, um, we, we did increase the levy slightly, very slightly, um, with it dedicated directly towards public safety. 
um, which I've been okay with. And, and I think the proper way to address anything with our water and sewer fund and our aging infrastructure and that underground is to do it with rates, not on property tax bills. Because at the end of the day, those that use pay. Those that use more, pay more. Those that use less, pay less. Rather than it being an even shot across the board. Um, which is why we've always discussed, uh, when we came up with uh, the, the first dollar, year, a couple of years ago, uh, into the water main replacement account, is it was done in that sort of a fashion and not a flat service fee onto the bill so that way those that use more pay more those that use less pay less and I think by increasing the rates by 25 cents at the end of the day it doesn't the rates don't keep up with increasing labor costs flat out we can sit here and debate um, uh, pump the bill and, and everything else if you just look straight up at salaries and, and what the salaries increase year after year. That 15 cents barely covers that. And then we're basically having the same conversation again, I think, right? Um, well, 23, 24, it, it's, it's hard to project assumptions on the new residents, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, in short, yeah. I mean, and you're going to have to evaluate that then. I, I, I'd like to think that what we're doing with our incentive packages, which were just passed through your committee last month. I think those will make some differences. I think we've had some inquiries and stuff like that. Obviously, the more people you get into the system, the better it is for the system as a whole, mm -hmm. um, which kind of curtails to what uh, uh, Bob was saying with the fact that in 2012, we've kind of capped our, our number of build customers, right? Um, because at the end of the day, you think about the system as a whole and there's water mains and stuff running everywhere. All that water that's in those mains, whether it's being tapped and, and brought into somebody's house or it's capped off and stubbed off at, at an empty lot, that water is all still treated. The, the men are there in place to take care of the system. The chemicals are there to treat the water to have it there on demand if it was tapped into a house. So your expenditures don't really increase significantly mm -hmm. at all. But you're adding people into the system that uses the burden on the rest of us. Sure. So hopefully that's where you can make up some of those shortfalls. And, and those are so small, I think, once you participate in the budget process mm -hmm. um, and, and, and knowing uh, especially through the years as you get to know Bob Barber, the way that I think mean, Scott definitely knows him and I know uh, if there's one thing about Bob Barber, uh, Bob plug your ears, is he's severely, which is a positive for the village. He underestimates revenue and he overestimates expenditures. Mm -hmm. So when I look at this and I, and I see that forecasted out five years from now, this fund will have a $26,000 shortfall after in five years not really concerned there, but I think right now this year, right out the gate, seeing um, it in the red that this is something that we've discussed year after year after year after the budget and seeing this coming that it's we've gotten to that point where we were five years and it's you got to make a decision, increase your revenues or decrease your expenditures and with the water system it's 
Yeah. It is what it is. Well, I mean, I'm not so much, um, I mean, of course I don't want to raise anything for no reason. However, um, I can see the, the need for it here. Um, but I'm curious if it would be advantageous, instead of doing a flat 15th cent break, is there any, I don't know if it's feasible or if there's any advantage, to somehow pegging it with inflation so that it kind of keeps up on its own? Or is that not really feasible? Bob? You there, Bob? Did the sound of losing Bob right there, maybe? <laughs> Trying to get on. We didn't lose everybody, did we? Well, I mean, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, this is a resolution. This is a five-year plan. It all comes down to when we actually do the year-to-year -year budget is when we make the final decisions for all of us. Um, I don't have the alternate plan in front of me. I didn't get it uh, as the original. Um, but I mean, I'm comfortable adopting whatever we want today. And come budget time, we'll, like, we can get in the, the weeds and the nitty gritty of all this. And, you know. Uh... So, okay, yeah. So the alternate plan. All right, I'm up on you guys. No, uh, that's what we figured. Did you hear the question? Yes, I unmuted, but I hit the uh, hang up button instead. Um, do you have another percentage on it? I know Piatone does do an annual percentage on the Elmer water system. Uh, you could do that. Um, it's easier for the residents to understand it goes up 25 cents a year. If you did it by percentage, it would be 25 cents one year, 27 cents the next, 29 the next, depending on the percentage you establish. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I'm not saying we need to answer it immediately, so you know, I'm just curious. Yeah. So, uh, on the, in, in, okay. So, that's, that's the water fund. Uh, next page would be uh, sewer, and within the sewer, you see the same thing. Um, sewer has about little bit has one year still left in it but it's the same trend that we've been seeing year after year with these five-year forecasts um, of running into the red the change is about the same thing about an, an additional 16,000 per year in revenue that the 25 cent increase would generate versus the 10 cent increase So that's that. Water, sewer, capital improvements. You see that. We have the forecast out what the improvements are, the possible improvements. Water and sewer debt service fund, um, which is, we'll see, we'll skip to the, those are basically our payments. What's the, you know, the last page you'll get to would be uh, 21, the water main replacement account. Um, There is an alternate also there, and you can see a little more drastically the difference that the one dollar into the water main replacement account will generate. Um, after you pay, once we pay. The Penfield loan, the lead service, you, we are currently we're bringing in about $153,000 a year, of which approximately 80k is dedicated to as a dedicated source of revenue for debt for the IEPA loan for Penfield and the. Uh, 
lead line, lead service line replacement. Uh, leaving roughly approximately $80,000 a year um, for a project. And where you would see it, it would be in fiscal year 25-26, where you see in the, under capital outlay of a, an expenditure, there would be approximately $234,328 for a project in 25-26 with the one dollar increase in the water main replacement account that would leave us with uh, at that time that same time in 25 26 there would be just short of eight hundred thousand there there would be seven hundred ninety four thousand nine hundred eighty seven dollars um at some point in you know i, I made these decisions when i chaired public works committee and I'm going to be reiterating them as uh, finance and administration chair. Because at some point, this board needs to make a decision. Either we're going to continue to live with outdated infrastructure, which could possibly affect our abilities to draw new business, to draw new uh, residents, or we're going to start looking at the future and try to replace it. Um, I remember sitting here uh, when our previous mayor was outgoing and, and what the, me and him really did not agree on a whole lot, but one thing. <laughs> so that got a little chuckle out of it, right? Uh, but at his very last board meeting, he, he looked at the board and he said, if there's one bit of advice I can give you after his 30 years or whatever involved in in this village is infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Always be improving your infrastructure. And we're at the point, guys, where we have some nice things done. The water, the uh, sewer plant is done. We got a nice water main project on Penfield Road. That'll be nice. And, and the, the water main is redone. We got to finish up with the streets and everything else like that. Um, but that's it. We're tapped. You're looking at back to, to band-aiding one block at a time for the next 50 years if we don't step up and improve our infrastructure. And you can only do that with one thing, and that's money. It takes money. And if this board isn't willing to invest and in, 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 in bite the bullet and explain to the residents that our only other options outside of doing this would be selling a system where we would have no control over the costs, of what their water bills are. And Aqua, which bills at a much higher rate than us, we have water charts in here as far as other communities, what they pay versus, or you know, what they charge versus us, which we're towards the bottom of. The fact of the matter is, is we gotta step up and, and listen to the people complain on Facebook a little bit because it's gonna be unexpected in this and that. But at some point, they're gonna see the improvements in our system. And, and the other part that I like about this versus um, when we discuss this water main replacement account, and I, I've said it a hundred times, versus it being incorporated into water and sewer fees as being separate, once we accomplish what we need to, these, this can be reduced again. You can take this off of people's water bills in the future. But at some point, this village is going to have to say, we got 100-year-old duck holes. And what is our goal? Do we want this replaced in the next 10, 12 years and to get rid of all the old duck domain and have all new plastic? Or are we looking to kick this duck can down the road for the next 30, 40 years and let our grandkids figure it out? So, I mean, that, that's where I'm at with it. You guys got alternate plans. Uh, Marcy, Todd, I mean, they'll be here, but uh, I mean, it's something to think about. I, I mean, that's all I got. Anyone have any other questions on this? Or No other questions?
So, Bob, if I understand this right, we need to make a resolution adopting one of these two. Um, and we have to do this for the auditors, correct? This, this needs to be done. We've got to make a decision on one or the other. Yeah, this is a plan. I get it. It's a plan. So, that there's... Right. And we can adopt it next month. I don't think we have to adopt it tonight. But what we're looking for is some guidance. So if you guys want to raise rates, we need the ordinances to prepare and get them adopted in February after you adopt the plan. Because then we have to incorporate the new revenues in the budget that we're producing. So we do need some direction. We don't need a vote tonight. We need some direction. Um, I'll, uh, I'll come out with, you know, my, my comments on this, and I've been in committee meetings about this. Um, nobody's too excited about raising rates, um, it, it, even as far as the water being replaced, but I kind of choked on that dollar even more than the, the 25 cents for the other two. However, we have been kind of postponing this every year, and I feel like it's something we're going to have to do. That's just my two cents. I think I agree with Marcy here on this one too. Uh, I mean, this is one of the most important services we provide the village, so I think it's important we do it well. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile uh, use of funds um, and ask for the village. Buddy Scott, what you thinking? No, I, I think, you know, we have talked about this for years, and I see what we have to do, and I, I feel we need to um, make the increases at this point to keep everything going. I think we're on a good, we have a good plan in place right now with the replacement and everything else, and I think we have to continue that and go down that road. Trustee Kraus? Just asking your consensus. Well, like I, said, I don't have a plan. I don't have a plan in front of me. Um, I just take a look at it. Over it. Um, I mean, like you said, we, we've always been very fiscally responsible. Um, nobody likes increases, uh, but this is a plan. So if we need to amend or uh, amend or change stuff later on, you know, we can. Especially when we get into the year-to-year finance and the year-to-year budget. Um, like I said, I have some other stuff that I'd like to ask, but it's going to be more of a budget time thing that we can get into. Um, but I'm okay adopting this plan now and we can amend it as needed. Because that, that, yeah, okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, I've got it now. I'll go ahead and produce the documents and the resolution for the next one's meeting. All right, so we, you don't want the. Do we have a resolution number now? No, because I think it was supposed it was just for discussion tonight for approval of resolution at the next meeting. Nice meeting. Okay. Since the resolution isn't available yet. Okay. All right. Well, then that concludes my report. Okay, public works committee. Marcy. Okay, so right on the on the back of what we just talked about, we'll go back to that refuse, uh, that potential refuse agreement. So I had a few things to say about that. Basically, when they came up with option one, the whole idea was coming up with a fixed increase as opposed to 4% the way it's been going up in our current contract. There isn't a heck of a lot of difference between the two. Um, the 75 cents per month is pretty close to what the 4% is now. It's the 75 cents, it's a little bit cheaper. I think by the end it comes to about 40 cents a month cheaper. Uh, but it's not a huge difference. And in my view, I think we actually have three options here. We can stay where we are and discuss it again next year and see what has changed. We can adopt option one or we can adopt option two. Um, when we were first talking about home with disposal, some of the issues that came up were
sure that there is, of course, increased charges with landfill, but there's also increased expense right now when it comes to COVID. And they've got, you know, crew members that are, are off sick. They said more people are staying home. They're decorating. They're doing all kinds of things that, that produce a lot of trash. So their costs are going up. We don't know what's going to happen in a year. They may, they may not. This could go up. Maybe it won't. So the first option is we could just stay where we are. Under this option one plan, the biggest difference is outside the flat 75 cents instead of 4%. They dropped the price of the yard waste cart from $190 to $160. Uh, for those that use the yard waste cart, that's probably uh, an attractive option for them. Uh, the $0.35 cents extra is, would be on top of the rates you're seeing in your packet, and that $0.35 cents would be the electronic waste. Um, I was excited about electronic waste when I first heard about this, but it's once a year for one television set, and yes, if you have a big TV set, you need somewhere to put it, but um, I was less excited when I heard those terms. It's, it's once a year, I, there might be other ways you could do this, you know, to bring it in an a, a electronic waste event once a year on our own, but that's something everybody can discuss and, and see what they prefer. When it comes to option two with the unlimited yard waste, and you've got all the information in front of you, this would really benefit People with big yards that do a lot of gardening. It would drop the blue waste container to $60 a year, which is great for people that use it. Um, I calculated the addition on this to be about $3.13 a month or $6.26 per bill, which now when you're talking about doing sewer, sewer and water increases, uh, it, it's going to look a lot less attractive. It eliminates the stickers, but you still have to go out and buy yard waste bags. The electronic waste is included in it, but um, I can argue that there are a lot of people, maybe close to 300, 250 to 300 people in town, living in townhouses that are paying probably around $150 a month to have their lawn waste taken care of and they, they don't use this. So they'll be paying for uh, the other people who will be benefiting from it. And um, I believe Trustee Kaporis came up with what we were talking about, the uh, water and sewer funds earlier about having people that use more pay more. Uh, this would be the opposite of that. It would be having everyone pay for something that some people would use. So um, I'll leave this for discussion. My personal idea um, is one of the first two, either leave it where it is and you know potentially renegotiate next year, or if we're not interested in rolling the dice, go with option one without the waste, the electronic waste, because I don't know that that 35 cents is a great thing for one TV a year. But I would like to hear what everybody else thinks. So, it, sitting through that meeting also, um, I, I, I went with Marcy, I was very intrigued because of uh, our last contract when this came up, um, there was some, it was a close vault, vote from what I recall as to uh, switch providers to go with the yard waste option because at the time, uh, Boulder Disposal didn't offer us an unlimited yard waste, but there was another company that did. Um, and it was a close vote and we uh, pulled back on it, we stayed where we were at. Um, a after other conversations with uh, this kind of came up right before we got into our five year uh, planning and, and seeing what we're probably going to need to do with uh, the garbage rates being on and incorporated into the water bill um, that we, we felt it would be a lot to do any sort of increases on that. Um, and, and then talking further, um, you know, I, I told Marcy, I, um, you know, Frank is, is new to us. We always dealt with Tom uh, previously. Um, I, I just, I, I, the whole thing is kind of jumping into re-upping a contract and signing on for more years, two years before our contract's done, 
just, I don't understand it. You know, um, I think this whole, in my own opinion, I think this is a decision that needs to come up possibly when there's less than a year left on that contract and you say, do we want to just uh, extend our current existing contract or do we want uh, to do uh, an RFP process um, and, and look for other numbers? Uh, I, I just, I don't see the need to even really be addressing this right now. consideration when you go out is uh, will you retain your same day you know what will your new provider do I think Homewood's always been good right and we had a uh, village survey that uh, garbage service I don't know if you remember Jeanette but it was pretty high right like yeah. that was like one of the things like people had like their little complaints about this or that, it was like one of the things that like everybody was happy with, the, the service. Um, I mean, I got my own little personal story and I, I told Frank, I mean, I, I for years have had an extremely elderly couple in their 80s that live right across the street from me and I don't know how many times I've watched that garbage truck driver jump out of his truck and wheel their cans up to their garage door knowing who they are. Would you get that out of another service? I don't know. I just, uh, you know, in short, the answer to your question is, Todd, is it pretty much kind of locks in right about where you're at now for an additional five years beyond. Um, but who knows what others are offering or would offer. Would be less than that, more than that, you don't know. Would you be able to maintain Monday service? I don't know. Two years from now, I mean, right now he's talking about, he brought up the fact that garbage is extremely high right now. They don't expect it to stay there. Would they be looking to come at you with less than 75 cents to keep you if they think you're going to leave? Who knows? You, you never know. That's part of making decisions on a, on a contract for professional services like this. Yeah, I think over the years, um, Homewood Disposal has, I, I can't remember having any complaints. We have a few here and there that they forgot somebody or whatever, but if they call us right away, Star comes right back out and takes care of it. And we have a good relationship with them where we can, we have a couple of habitual people who can be slightly difficult. And if we call them up and say, you didn't pick up their garbage, they have notes in there as to why they didn't pick it up. Or they say, well, they, this guy keeps giving us a problem because he doesn't put it here or do that. We, we have a really good relationship with the dispatch. We have very few complaints about them, which is wonderful at Village Hall on Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Especially, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think that's really the key, you know, is you got a good company, you know, that uh, you have a great track record with them. I mean, we've been with them for... How long that 30 years? I don't know. You know, I mean, it's been a long time. Now, do you remember the last one? The last time we went through this with the going for the, the contract? Unless you remember. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, Bob. Yeah, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I believe it was 2013. It wasn't 10 years ago. We did an RFP process. Yep. And we had three business. 
management for public and homeless disposal. He and Tony Mooney and Beecher did it together. We, we went in together because our contract expired at the same time. Uh, Mooney went with for public, and Piatone and Beecher went with homeless disposal. Continued. It was a 10-year contract with the prices locked in. Um, we could do the same thing, and I would say do it in two years. Uh, this contract stood until June 30th of 23, so you probably start the process in the fall of 22. If you wanted to do an RFP process, or you could enter into negotiations to extend the current contract at that time, if you're not comfortable extending right now. Um, but I think it's, it's a good idea to see where we're at with getting this proposed extension that's early in the game. Do we have any indicator of which way this is, the rates are going to go in the future? Now, this is pretty typical. Um, if you look at their proposal in the uh, last year of the contract, from 27 to 28, they would be charging you $22.93 a month. Uh, there's some communities that are paying that amount right now for, for refugees. It all depends on geography and the location of the landfills they're at. What, what their labor costs are in their county, and think that there's a lot of factors that, that can get involved in, in refuse collection. Uh, but 2293, and I, I checked out the rates that they offered. I think they're, they're competitive rates, they're comparable rates. Um, but I do want to point out that when we franchise, and this is a franchise agreement, originally when I came to town in, in 1988, uh, it was open season for refuse hauling. We had four or five haulers in town hauling customers on different days, different trucks. It was a disaster for our roads. So we franchised, and at that time, the residents were paying about $29 a month for refuse pickup. It was really expensive. So even today, they're paying less now than they did 30 years ago. So the program itself is working. How you want to move forward, that's entirely up to you. Whether we do another RFP process, extend the current contract, that's entirely up to the board what they want to do. Uh, I'm a little wa wary, like Trustee Kapoor said, this far out renegotiated contract. I mean, maybe next year, but I mean, we have a, a vendor we like that's good to us. You know, there's a rate and increases are comparable. Our, our monthly rate is good compared to surrounding villages and towns. You know, uh, I don't know about this year, but you know, maybe next year, I think it'd definitely be a good time to hear um, an extension. Well, Todd, uh, maybe, like, I guess I should rephrase the way I put that, was if, if this board is pretty well set that, you know, this is the provider for us, then I, I think you, you look into extending because... Their, what they're offering per year as a flat increases what you're getting as an increase in the last year of the contract. And you're keeping that increase the same for an additional one, two, three, four years after that. So I don't see them going increasing, the increase reducing from what you would be at your final year if you wait. If, if the board is, you know, pretty set that this is our vendor, this is who we would want to stay with, then I, I think then, yeah, you could definitely look into just re-upping it for the additional five. And it does, I mean, the one thing this plan, the first option does, if you do extend it out, you do save 30 bucks per year for the people that use the Yardway subscription cart. Um, and then the only question would be whether you want to add the 35 cents for electronic. My personal idea is I'm, that's kind of a no for me, but you know I could go either way. I, I think so too, because you can do that for, for nothing. I mean, you can bring it over to Piatone or Frankfurt or, you know, and that's on, uh, I think, two Wednesdays a month. You know, so I don't 
don't know if I want to charge the residents, you know, 35 cents for that. Especially if we get it free. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm good with uh, Trustee Whaley and Trustee Paul Meyer on this, but the action one. Yeah, I agree. I think because also we also if we we have until what 2023 to really make a final decision anyhow. So if something changes in the next couple of years where e-waste or something else becomes a more attractive option, we still have some time to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Is that it, uh, Trustee Myers? Yes, sorry. That's just my report. Okay. It's difficult to do by phone. <laughs> I know there's that delay, and it's, it's convenient. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
right. That concludes. Uh, is there any old business? I got something if I could. Okay, Matt. Um, our employee that was hurt in the accident back in uh, the end of July should be returning to work as early as tomorrow. He's been released through work comp, so yeah, we should get our full crew back tomorrow. Great news. That's great news. Did you want to repeat that? I didn't hear uh, Yeah, Todd, I said uh, our public works employee that got hurt in the accident back in July will be returning to work tomorrow. to adjourn our meeting. So moved. I'll second it. Uh -huh. All right, roll call. Meyer? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Burroughs? Yes. Krause? Yes. Possession? Yes. We are adjourned. Okay.